Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we're tackling a problem every machinist faces, surface grinder wheel balance. An unbalanced wheel will never give you the clean finish you want. So I built a precision wheel balancing stand that uses an air bearing for best sensitivity. I'm going to build this thing from scratch and see just how accurate we can get. I am starting by machining the brass holders. So how does it work? I will make two aluminum cylinders that act as the main housing. Inside each one, a brass holder slides up and down, guided by collars. This holder is what actually supports the wheel's shaft. The secret is in the airflow. I'm feeding compressed air into the bottom of the aluminum cylinders. The air then flows right up through the brass holder and is forced out a small port just below where the shaft rests, effectively floating the shaft on a cushion of air. Both brass holders are made from one shaft. With the shaft securely in the vise, I'm making a flat spot right in the middle. This gives us a solid surface to start on. Then, I'll drill a 12 mm through hole directly on that flat. To get this board to its final precise dimension, I'm using a boring head. This tool allows me to make fine adjustments, ensuring a perfect fit for the shaft. Now that I've cut the piece in two on the bandsaw, I'll drill four millimeter holes straight through each half. To prevent any air from leaking, we need to install an O-ring. Right now, I'm machining the precise groove where that O-ring will sit. This is a critical step to ensure a perfect airtight seal. It's time to start machining the cylinders. First, I'll face the ends to get a perfectly flat and square surface. Then, I'll drill a pilot hole, drill through, before using a boring bar to machine the internal diameter to its final exact dimension. A simple caliper won't give us the precision we need here. So, to measure this bore accurately, I'm using a three-point internal micrometer. The three contact points ensure it's perfectly centered, giving us a far more reliable measurement. I'm turning the outside diameter to size and then parting the piece to its final length.
To mount the cylinder to the base plate, I'm now tapping a thread into the bottom of it. This will allow us to bolt it securely to the stand, ensuring a solid and rigid assembly. The next component is the collar, which acts as a precision guide for the holder. I'm machining it now, and the critical part is holding a 0.02 mm tolerance on both the inside and outside diameters. This level of accuracy is essential for a frictionless fit, allowing the holder to travel cleanly on the 8 mm guidance and keeping the whole system perfectly aligned. Now it's time to work on the base plate. I start cleaning up the edges. Since I only have one finished reference edge to work with, I start by machining it vertically to ensure everything stays square. This piece is a bit larger than what I usually machine, so I'll need to reset my vise to get a proper and secure hold before I can start cleaning up the edges. Now that the base plate is prepped, I'll position, drill, and tap the holes that will hold our cylinders. To save time and ensure accuracy, I'm going to center, drill, and tap these holes all at once. By doing this without ever moving the table, I eliminate any potential for misalignment and make the process faster and more repeatable. Time to install the mounting screws. Working now on the air intake feature. To make a secure connection for our push-in fitting, I'll flatten the side of the cylinder. Then, I'll center, drill, and tap the hole. I'm making sure to not go all the way through, ensuring the air pressure gets where it needs to go. To hold the brass holder securely inside the cylinder, we'll use two diametrically opposed set screws. I'm now drilling and tapping the holes for them. These screws will lock the holder in place after it's been precisely positioned and aligned at the correct height. Looks like we're getting some flex. I'm going to set up a quick support.
For our balancer to work correctly, the entire base plate must be perfectly level. To achieve this, I'm going to add three adjustable feet screws. This classic three-point design is the best way to ensure a stable and perfectly level platform. A flat foot on a flat surface can still rock, but a ball on a flat surface creates a single point of contact. That's why I'm installing a steel ball at the end of each adjustable foot screw. Knurling for a good grip. Now I'm drilling and tapping the three holes for the feet. I'm positioning them at 60 degree increments from each other. Let's assemble it. Just a little bit of Teflon here to make sure we don't have any leaks. Based on how much of a struggle it was to get that holder in, I've got a good feeling this is going to be perfectly airtight. With the set screws tightened, it's time to verify my work. I need to make sure the holders are at the correct height. The moment of truth is here. Let's introduce some air and see if everything works as planned. I'm bringing in the pressure now for our first test. That's the floating feel I wanted to see. Wow. This shaft could turn forever. Now you can see why that three-point leveling system was so important. This air bearing is incredibly sensitive. It's so frictionless that even a slight slant would cause the wheel to slowly drift. With our balancer confirmed to be working, it's time for the real life test. I've got a grinder wheel right here. I'll place it on and you can see it immediately finds the heavy spot. Now. I'll use the adjustable weights to fine-tune the balance one weight at a time until the wheel stays put no matter where I leave it. That's how we know we have the perfect setup. It takes a little patience to get it perfect, but when you're done, there's nothing better than the satisfaction of a perfectly balanced grinder wheel. Thanks for watching my video, and don't forget to like and subscribe.